So Anna Maria, um, I, I accept everything you're saying and the, the, intuitively the sprouts seem like I don't even ask questions. It's so obvious to me that this would be a good thing, but yeah. it's really, really hard to accept what Udo's saying. I've been brainwashed over and over. People talk about oil in such a negative way that I have like fear that I'm gonna clog up my arteries, that I'm gonna create a heart issue. Um, cardiologists have said, absolutely stay, you know, stay, oil is bad. So is there, I don't wanna be a guinea pig and test it out. They, they're, you know, they're really confident, these cardiologists. How many people have you told to eat sprouts with oil and how many of them have done well and how many have failed and said it didn't work, I ended up with a heart attack. I mean. I really don't want to be the guinea pig, even though I want to do what you're saying. Now, I've never seen anybody with a heart attack. We've seen people saving their heart. Um, the thing is, if you come here and you're serious, uh, you seriously had heart attacks and you are, your heart is not in good shape, I would tell you, just eat, eat avocado, eat seeds and nuts. We make nut milk for you. Stay out of the oil for now but it will come back. The people with cancer, I don't have a problem. What are they gonna do? They have a salad that's swimming in oil? No, it's a, we, we have a condiment table and there is pretty sparingly olive oil in, in those bottles. It's gonna last for a lot of people. And we have, we have seaweed um, uh, salts made of uh, kelp and dulse and nori to add to that. But our food is so incredibly tasty that we don't need to add a lot of oils to our salad for sure. But, you know, it, Brian and I are not against oil. There can be some people that have serious, serious heart problem that we, we have to be more careful for now. We use a lot of nitric oxide for them to get them over. And we have a product called um, uh, Circulation Max, and not to sell it, but it's, it's nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is also in a lot of the vegetables that we eat. And naturally it's avocado. So should I be afraid of the oil in avocado, the oil in Brazil nuts, in almonds, you know? And so, there's got to be a balance in everything. And because we eat raw, most people in this field eat 100% cooked, maybe a little salad. So for them, they're so depleted already that the oil is causing big problems. Totally different than when you add it to raw foods, raw sprouts and vegetables. Can I can I add something to that? Yes, please. Yes. You said you don't want to be the you don't want to be the guinea pig. You know what? You're the guinea pig of whatever people tell you. And if yes. they have big and if they have big credentials, then you will be their willing guinea pig, even if their information is wrong. Because all mm -hmm. of the people who demonize oils are talking yeah. about oils that have been damaged by industry in the production yes. because they were interested in shelf life rather than health. Mm -hmm. And then they use those oils in the most destructive way that we've ever invented for frying. And then that's what these all of these people read. But in the research, they never point out the damage done by processing. That's been hidden from people for 100 years. The industry started 120 years ago. They have never put that, there's research on it, if you can yeah. dig deep enough. And what happens is all of these doctors and all of these people, they, they're doing great work and I don't want to put them down, but I have to say they haven't done their homework. And I don't, again, I don't want to, I don't want to put them down, but please do the homework. Look at where the damage that you see in the studies that came from oils actually came from. It didn't come from the oil, it came from the damage done to the oils by the processing or during food preparation and when you and you because i came in just like you did you know i thought oh yeah oils yeah oh yeah and i read all that research and what happened to me was i got one study that said omega-6 is essential which means you you have to have it you can't live without it if you don't get enough you die but if you get, bring it back before you die in adequate quantities then you get your health back that's what essential means. Okay, so omega-6 is essential. And the next study I read, it says omega-6 gives you cancer and kills you. 
And I tell you, my head exploded. It's like, what the, you know, it's essential for health. And then it kills me with cancer. And it was that contradiction, trying to understand how can that be? That got me looking at a little deeper behind the scene. What are we doing to those oils? That's where it came from. And I'm, by the way, I am exhibit A for what I do. I've been using these oils for, well, we, they, we came out with Udo's oil in 1994. Uh, and I've been using it since 1994. I use four tablespoons in summer, two or three, uh, sorry, four in winter, two or three in summer. I put my, I, I dip my foods in it. I eat mostly raw plants. So I'm, I'm very much in that direction because I know the standard is fresh, whole, raw, organic and mostly plant-based and I dip it and I, I, I dip it in tahini, dump the tahini oil out, put my oil in because it has lots of omega-3s in it and, and made with health in mind, we developed a method to protect the oils from light, oxygen and heat and the mainstream industry, that's a hundred billion dollar industry every year has never done that in the 120 years that it's existed. Udo, let me ask you. Let me ask. Let me. I'm going to ask you one question, then I'll introduce Doug. But yeah. assuming that someone has high quality hemp, flax, chia, walnut, avocado oil, yeah. How much are you saying? Are you saying we should use a tablespoon a day, five tablespoons a day, ten? Like I yeah, could, eat, I could eat unlimited cucumbers and it doesn't cause a problem. How many tablespoons of oil can I use in a day before okay. you would become uncomfortable? We we recommend about 25% of calories, which is about a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day. So for most people it would be two to four tablespoons, 12 to 25% of calories. Mixed in food and intake spread out over the course of the day. Because oils are usually with foods, of course the seeds and nuts that uh, Anna Marie talks about, seeds and nuts is where most of the oils are. So, so you're getting that even from the sprouts, you're also getting extra oils, okay? okay? And so and so, what I'm saying is, you know, the idea that just because the guy is a doctor or just because the guy is a vegan or a vegetarian or just because, you know, he, he, he deals with patients doesn't mean that they understand everything. Usually they were not trained in nutrition and they picked it up on the side and they picked it up from all of the research that's done on damaged oils, and they have come to wrong conclusions about essential fatty acids because of the damage that was done to them, and that wasn't pointed out in the research done on them. And so what I did the research, and I spent six years digging through it to try and figure it out. And, uh, and uh, all I can say is we have tons of people that, that come back and say, amazing. In, in terms of just about every body part. The research, if you summarize the research on omega-3s, if they're not damaged and not toxic, says that when you increase omega-3s in the diet, you can improve virtually every major degenerative condition of our time. Because every cell needs them, they're essential, they're a nightmare to work with. Most people don't like to work with those oils, 99% of the population doesn't get enough. When you give them the omega-3 and 6, both in the right ratio, high grading the omega-3s a little, but flax is too rich in omega-3. It actually made me omega-6 deficient. So you have to deal with some issues. Oh, and getting too much, you know, you can't, you can't get too much because if you take too much oil at any one time, when you hit your liver capacity, it will let you know. And then you start to feel heavy, tired, or nauseous because you're taking it too fast and you're not giving your liver time and space to, to process it. So then when, when you get tired or nauseous, it means you have to mix it in food, spread it out, out, of the, out over the course of the, the day better. Okay. What, what percentage of the omega-3s are ALA, EPA, or DHA? In... in, in in my oil, uh, Your oil we own, yeah. yeah, we only work with ALA and LA, which is the omega-6. And it's about the oil is between 40 and 50 percent omega-3 in the form of ALA. It's plant-based. And it's uh, it's about half of that in omega-6, 
plant-based. We don't use fish oils because they're even more damaged than the cooking oils because they are 25 times more sensitive to damage done by light, oxygen, and heat than the cooking oils that are already 1% damaged and get you more than a million damaged molecules for every one of your body's 60 trillion cells in one tablespoon. So what, what, is the, what does your research say about the need for EPA and DHA and where would that come from if someone's on an all plant-based diet? Oh yeah, well, first of all, EPA and DHA are not essential nutrients. And the reason why is because an essential nutrient is defined as something you cannot make in your body from anything else, have to have to live and be healthy and therefore have to get from outside. Well, actually, you can make EPA and DHA in your body from ALA, from the plant-based. And the big issue is not that your body can't convert. The big issue is that you're not getting enough starting material to do the conversion. Because the same enzymes that convert omega-3s convert omega-6s. But nobody has a problem with omega-6 conversion. Why not? because they get lots of omega-6s in their diet, so they're getting enough starting material to do the conversion, right? So, and then there are some other issues, you know, if you don't have enough magnesium and zinc and B3 and B6 and C in your diet, they're, they're involved in the conversion, and a lot of people are deficient in those as well, then you're going to slow down conversion. If you eat animal products, that's going to slow down your conversion. If you're plant eating, that doubles your rate of conversion. And all of the conversion studies that were done, they did not, and they, the, the, actually the numbers on the conversion studies going back probably, well, from before I started, so it's going back over 40 years. The conversion studies all came up with all kinds of different percentages of conversion because they never, but they never said, what's the context here? What kind of diet are these people on? What are they doing besides the oil that you gave them? Or be, you know, and then they also cheated on the studies. They gave, they gave them 5% of labeled alpha linolenic acid and then measured the labeled DHA, ignored the retro conversion to EPA, ignored the forward conversion to a whole bunch of other nutrients that are made from DHA, and they completely ignore it. And this is the biggest thing that you, everybody already has somewhere between 15 and 60 grams of ALA in their, in their body that is available conver to, for conversion, but is not labeled. So they labeled five grams and ignored the, the whole rest of it. And you know what? I swear they must have done that deliberately to come up with low conversion numbers because they get their grants from the fish oil industry. <music>